I would like to ask Stefan to stay on the stage and join the next panel discussion. Also, let's give a warm welcome to previous speakers, Mr. Spetoslav Moldovansky, Ms. Krasimira Rajcheva, and Mr. Konstantin Wolf. And welcome to our moderator, Pamen Rusev. Welcome on stage. Thank you very much. Are you tired already? We have many days left. Please, uh, great speeches, great presentation, all of you digital. My team got me ready some Sorry. analog questions <laughs> here for you, which I will see if I'm gonna ask you or not, but um, thanks for your uh, informative presentations. Well, you went so, uh, so you went so deep into, into the, the technicalities and the, the whole process, I believe, that enlightened a lot of, uh, of people in this room. So, um, we are here to, to finalize the topic around money and payments and um, to, to, to open discussion for um, the whole auditorium, if, and the floor is yours, by the way, after I finish my questions, so please get ready your questions for these top-level professionals and I'm sure that you'll get your answers done. But we're talking about mobile, obviously, no layers. And uh, let me start with, a, um, with, with the, the strange question, but they wrote it here, who is the next PayPal in Central Eastern Europe? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm not sure if we have to, to answer exactly who is the next PayPal, but who do you see the stars here? Let's start from the, from the investor's point of view. Do you see stars rising up here? And um, how do you see it growing? Also, Svetoslav and Trace Investment Bank are supporting a lot the, eco the ecosystem of startups here, also in Bulgaria, doing great jobs. So I'm sure that all of you have a, a point of view. Well, I'm probably the, the, the wrong person to start because I'm here to learn more about, about the market. And, and so far, I had very little visibility about, about uh, startups around here, but um, who's the next uh, PayPal? I think um, we're seeing a lot of uh, startups that are using the PayPal concept, um, not necessarily um, in, in, th in this region. I mean, uh, we obviously, there are a number of PayPal clones that are being very succe successful uh, in some of uh, other markets. Um, uh, pay you naspers right would be one of those examples pretty much works like paypal i hope i hope i'm describing this correctly um that has been very successful in some countries here um uh, i i think this is very hard i mean in 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 in, in the western part i think like in london i see i see a lot of opportunity for um card aggregation plays that kind of work like paypal but where you have you know, your four or five cards you load it all in and then you just use one I think, th but that's very specific UK. The I'm one, not actually, I'm not is the a good one. example. I'm not, yeah. I'm not sure uh, this is so relevant around here, maybe not, um, but um, yeah. Um, for, for sure, what will also happen here, like anywhere else, is, is a convergence of um, you know, online and offline worlds. So all these wallets, at the end of the day, uh, on, a, on a mobile phone allow um, the customer to buy online and at the same time buy um, at the point of sale, irrespective of whether it, he or she touches the device or not. Maybe it's an in-app payment at the physical. So there's all these combinations that you can do today already. I'm pretty sure also in Bulgaria. Don't know. Um, but if not now, very soon. Uh, so uh, at the end of the day, that's a little bit like a PayPal coming to the point of sale, I guess. Yeah. From the uh, perspective, perspective of those who have license for some activity like us, uh, I would say that uh, we very soon we will struggle to uh, stay on this, this market uh, because of the, uh, the huge competition. Number 26 is a very good example how you can do a business uh, and provide a service with no fee uh, and uh, I see future uh, for banks uh, as business-to-business uh, -business, uh, providers uh, uh, having this uh, huge infrastructure uh, and uh, all the licenses, uh, all the capital required uh, 
to provide actually services to enable startups uh, like this uh, uh, and to spread the services among a huge uh, bigger customer base. So uh, I, as I see it, it's economy of scale and uh, we already do this. I, I cannot stop this question. I have to ask you a week ago, um, the, the CEO of the biggest bank in the States for a second year in a row sent a letter to the shareholders saying, beware of the Silicon Valley, they want to eat your lunch. Talking about the money and payments companies that arise there all the time. And obviously talking about the bank system that uh, is according to his letter threatened by the startups. And here we are talking about supporting them. So where is the synergy? And I, again, I state that I know that you're doing great deal of, of support here for the ecosystem in Bulgaria particularly, mm -hmm. but um, also many banks are doing around the, uh, the region, but you're playing a major role. So how do you see it next? Do you plan on, on uh, integrating solutions? Uh, do you have a, a long-term um, strategy on uh, working with, with the, the startups or developing your own solutions? Because mm -hmm. we have a very strong IT department also. Yeah, sure, sure we have a strategy. Actually, last year we made it public. Uh, we believe that uh, we should go through a huge transformation. Uh, we believe that uh, our system should be accessible to the end customers. Actually, we are working uh, and uh, part of this strategy is uh, uh, now we are replacing our channels. Uh, for instance, uh, if there are users of uh, our mobile banking application, uh, actually they are working with the core system directly. Uh, and uh, this is one of the possible channels. Uh, Tellers are working directly with the core. Uh, uh, web users also will work directly with the core. And, uh, Furthermore, uh, we'll provide kiosk and everything uh, uh, to enable uh, the customers to work uh, directly through a third party device. Uh, but uh, the most in interesting part of this strategy is that uh, uh, our system, the, this uh, transformation allows to integrate uh, uh, any other business which wants to somehow interact with us uh, uh, and uh, maybe with a one, two months uh, project uh, to enable them to interact with the bank. Uh, for instance, we have a, a very well-known uh, uh, TV, uh, online TV provider, which uh, has business-to-business uh, -business, uh, interconnectivity with our system. We do all the financial part for them and they just uh, provide the service. Uh, so this is the future I see for the banks. Uh. Thank you. And Cassie, what do you think about me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a stupid question, isn't it? <laughs> okay, you know, if I knew who is the next winner, I would become a millionaire. <laughs> and here I will stop with the joke. Anyway, uh, I, will I would like to give some data. Well, uh, in Europe, for example, the growth in uh, e-commerce payments is around 18% year over year. For Bulgaria, it's 40% based on our data. So you can see the big growth and the big potential of the country in, in that area. Also, uh, the, the percentage of the econ payments compared to the overall portfolio is uh, really significant. Uh, and uh, of course, our predictions are that uh, by 2020, more than 50% uh, of the payments will go over mobile. Uh, what uh, we are doing as uh, Visa Europe, uh, we actually have a digital wallet uh, without me, uh, provided by our uh, banks uh, to, to the customers. Uh, we are live in uh, eight big markets and have plans to become live in ten more by the end of this year. Definitely Bulgaria is on the agenda for the coming years. So work the space and see how, how this goes, but I believe uh, in the, ne the next uh, one, two years we will have this okay, the potential, the potential yeah. is here. And the yeah. potential is here, Absolutely. of course. So, Konstantin, what do you think? So, I think uh, <coughs> the first question is probably a debate on, on what PayPal actually is, um, in terms of uh, is it a bank, uh, is it omnichannel, just one channel? Um, uh, what service does it actually render? Because by now PayPal is relatively big. Um, 
has also followed different strategies over time, has changed that recently again. So I think also there with the spin-off also from eBay, it's not quite clear what PayPal is today and what it will be tomorrow. Um, at least from the outside. Yeah, but perspective. I told you it's a stupid question, so let's. No, let's no, no, it's fine. I mean, it's just, yeah. and, and I think that's probably part of the, the second part uh, of what you've asked, which is of what should a traditional player do? Because I think to a certain extent, PayPal is by now also a traditional player. I mean, it's, it's a company from sure. the 90s, uh, not to say that's a 200 year old bank, but uh, if we talk about the new people, of course, PayPal is always a bit put into that bucket, but at the end, the, the people from Silicon Valley that uh, sort of uh, are out there are probably younger and at a different uh, sort of age level in terms of a company than, than PayPal. Now, I but if you look to PayPal, what they've done as a potentially more traditional player than young player, they have done a lot of acquisition. I mean, they, uh, w whatever became successful, take a brain tree, they've acquired for relatively high multiples. So they've been following a relatively standard, let's say, M&A strategy to say whatever works we buy. Um, I think that's certainly a way a traditional player can go about it. Um, at the other hand, on the other hand, something that Stefan raised, the question is, how can you as a traditional bank or insurance company work smarter together with young people to get involved earlier, um, to actually get some insights, knowledge, but ultimately also economic benefit in case one of those actually gets big? Because uh, I don't believe in the you know 360 degree transformation of a bank into a innovative tech company. That's probably not gonna work overnight. So if you want to uh, get somewhat involved, you need to manage both in parallel, which is managing your, let's say, traditional business in the traditional way and probably start to emerge more and more to in, in engage with younger companies and younger people. And I think that's also something we've seen uh, not only in, in the States, but also in Europe more and more over the past two or three years that now traditional banks set up uh, VC funds and, and, and different structures. And then you can debate also what's the best way to do it to actually engage with younger companies, in, invest in them, et cetera, to, to get more into the scene, so to speak, and into it. I think that could be much more done than what it is done today, but you at least see a positive trend towards traditional players um, more actively being involved in, in, in the fintech space. Well, um, since we're running out of time, and, and um, I was, I, I miss here the, the Coinify um, uh, speaker, but, uh, we had to change the agenda for him to fly back, but, um, how do you see, first, do you expect a new technology on the market that could dramatically change it? And second, how, what do you see as the role of the, the virtual currencies in the, whole, in the whole mix? So I think, first of all, um, so in the offline world, cards will survive and will remain the dominant forms of non-cash payments for a long period of time. That's my personal point of view, because essentially, um, people are driven by habit. And now, especially in those areas of the world where cards have been around for decades, the question is, how do I change the habit of somebody having five plastic cards in his wallet and paying with that every single week, uh, buying groceries? How do I change that habit? I need to provide additional value and some incentive for him or her to change his behavior. Creating that incentive, many people have tried and all of them have more or less failed, um, at least in the offline world. So therefore, in the world, in the areas of the world where card penetration is high today, it, it will remain there and it will be remain the, the dominant form of payments. In areas of the world where there's little card penetration, there we will see other developments that will be significantly more digital and probably those areas of the world will be much further advanced digitally in terms of mm, digital payments at the POS without involving plastic cards. Are you talking about Africa here? Or? Not, not necessarily, Some, so, so also certain parts of Asia where you have relatively little uh, card penetration, um, some areas of Latin America. So there's you know, many parts, uh, essentially, if you look outside of, I would say, s Central Western Europe and North America and, and some countries in Latin, card penetration gets very thin uh, on, the, on the global level. Um, and, and, and therefore, I think that that's what you're gonna see in the offline world and in, in sort of more established card payment markets, cards will survive and the others, you will see more digitalization. In the offline space, um, I, I still think that we will see a lot of, let's say, digital card payments in the sense of um, uh, still under the roof, so to speak, of the larger schemes. Uh, because again, there so far, they have been the people creating an ecosystem of trust and security that has worked for most part used to be involved in. Um, and actually, if you also look at the majority of payments that are running through more established payers like PayPal, many of that is at the end a ca digital card transaction because people don't have debits, they don't have any funds in their PayPal accounts. They use PayPal as a layer to draw money from a 
Visa, Mastercard, Feature, right. Debit or Credit Card. But uh, as far as the the penetration of the smart of the um, cards, um, I'm sure that's what Slavic Kraci will disagree with you, especially for the uh, penetration in Central Eastern Europe. I think it's quite high, you know. I mean, for Bulgaria, it's uh, well. As I said in my uh, presentation, penetration of cards in Bulgaria is really very good. I would say one person per. Can hour. you compare? I know that you're responsible for Bulgaria, but the guys in in this event are coming from forty countries. Can you give a uh, or if you don't, don't worry. But what is the percentage for Central Eastern well Europe? Well, um, more or less, uh, Central Eastern Europe is one the same. So Bulgaria is not lagging behind uh, in right. this area, but we are lagging behind in the usage in of the these usage. cards. In yeah. the usage, so people far have them, but they don't far use them. behind right. uh, the other countries. Far behind the other countries, especially in the area of uh, debit cards, I would say. So uh, I don't want to quote exactly uh, exact statistics, but uh, really in, in the area of usage, we have to to learn a lot and here uh, as you mentioned uh, habit habit is still cash unfortunately in bulgaria and in many other countries but there is a room and potential to to grow in in this area of course cards may disappear in terms of um, moving into card plastic may disappear at some point and go into mobile but this is again the the layer of um, of uh, really uh, established uh, systems. While we are speaking here about the cryptocurrencies uh, here, I would like to, to point out the really the core uh, uh, and the strengths of uh, the established systems, uh, mainly in the area of uh, security, of in the area of interoperability, and all that stuff. So the, the promise that that's given to the customer. And this is something that uh, when we speak about personal money, I believe um, nobody can, uh, how to say, escape of out of this. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you're gonna say this. <laughs> 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 so to solve, what do you think? <laughs> Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, in my opinion, uh, cards, in I, I would agree that um, maybe the plastic itself uh, may disappear, but uh, the card infrastructure is something which uh, uh, has penetrated our life in such a manner that uh, I see it uh, quite difficult to be overcome by uh, some other new, tech new uh, technology. Uh, actually, the possibility to use some token, uh, I mean the PAN numbers, CVC code, etc and uh, to have this uh, transferred uh, to the issuer of this token and uh, then have authorization. Uh, this is a huge infrastructure which uh, uh, should be amortized and nobody, I it will be like the cars, you know, the car industry. <laughs> there are too much money put in there and it will be too hard to be replaced. <laughs> but they're quite disrupted by, by the uh, driverless cars these days. You know, I've opened with this statement that UK is um, is uh, heading to become the, the the largest user. I mean, their their economy and as, as a country, they want to be number one in the world by 2017 on a number of, of driverless cars on the roads. So things are disrupting quite fast, and that's why I've asked you about the technology and with your experience. Um, 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 I'm sure you're you're giving that point of view. I think that Stefan is not agreeing mm. uh, with all we say. What do you think, Stefan? No, no. I mean. So virtual, we talk about virtual currencies. I mean, virtual currencies are already um, enormously large in emerging markets. So for me, virtual currency is not just Bitcoin. It's obviously mobile money, for instance. So you all know Safaricom in Kenya, mm -hmm. right? Where like 60% of people are, are, are using a really simple SMS-based payment. That's also in a way a virtual currency, right? That that this mobile carrier is, is, is producing and that is being traded. So, uh, so I think, um, you will see um, an enormous growth in virtual currencies in emerging markets. Um, and in our world, um, um, we, d we don't know yet. There will be a lot of very specific use cases for cryptocurrencies. Um, uh, for instance, in the game space, we've already seen it a lot, yeah. Um, we might see it, for instance, we're now talking to teams that basically want to monetize video production. So all these YouTubers, right? I mean, it's today, it's very hard to monetize that, also because of lack of payment infrastructure. Sure. 
So, I mean, I think there you will find certain use cases that will work really so well with digital, Bitcoin. Digital entertainment in general, you <coughs> see yeah. it as an opportunity yeah, for the virtual currencies, right? Absolutely. So you're actually agreeing together and on all these. So you really have to pick your use case, right? I mean, think of Paysafe Card. I don't know if you're aware of that. It's like an Austrian company. And it was like started in 2001 and, and, and like people would laugh at the time, right? Because what were they doing? It's like cash for the internet, right? Okay, w why? Yeah. Very specific games use case for uh, all Clear. these kids buying a sword and they want to mm. buy it now, right? So they go to the tiller cash, etc. And this business was sold uh, with, uh, I think, at uh, 160 million two years ago, right? I mean, that's how right. much yeah. growth you have in picking the right use case. Yeah. Thanks a lot. And since these are amazing speakers, I couldn't uh, interrupt them all the time, but um, we have only 33 seconds left. So, <laughs> question, please. <laughs> Anybody for questions? Why don't we sing a song? Or we will just... <laughs> 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 it's probably it's all that's left. Uh, so I if we are without questions, then we will be exactly on time. You know, mm -hmm. nine, eight, seven. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>